So hello everybody, uh, once again we are at the uh, 6th uh, video cast uh, from Eurexis China. It is our 6th monthly video cast which means that we have already arrived at the half point of this year and what a year it has been. We have a lot of things to share with you today but the first thing that I would like to share is my colleague Anna who is speaking from Italy. Uh, hello Anna. <laughs> Yeah, hi Hansel, hi everybody. As you can see from my window behind my shoulders, I'm beautiful Rome, <laughs> trying to enjoy summertime in Italy. What else should we do here? <laughs> it's also been pretty. It's also been a pretty good uh, summer so far here in Beijing, and uh, except for that, in Beijing June is uh, June has the occasional rain that uh, doesn't happen often often here. So in general, here in North China, it's quite dry and it doesn't rain a lot. And uh, honestly, the city m doesn't uh, hurt to have a little bit of uh, rainy season uh, once in a while. So I'm glad for all the plants and the trees around to see, see the rainfall. But I have to say one thing, it makes it a little bit of a risky game to be organizing a garden party in middle of June. And that is one of the things that we just did last week, actually. We did a little, uh, a little uh, garden party in the garden of the European delegation. And, uh, and it was quite successful. I mean, like, honestly, it was a little bit funny because uh, we had been looking at the weather forecast for weeks and, like, hoping to get a better picture if this would be possible. Because, you know, taking advantage of the nice summer weather, it's like a once in a... a, once in a lifetime opportunity to do something lovely like that for our for our guests and uh, what happened in the week uh, in advance of the um, of the event is that we basically had a weather forecast of a thunderstorm during exactly when we we're supposed to do our event in the end it did rain a little bit but we also managed to catch a bit of dry spell in between during the uh, last part of the day so we were able to do a little bit of this uh, combination of inside outside event which was very lovely maybe uh, Maybe Anna would like to explain a little bit what I'm getting at here. What event are we talking about? Yeah, of course, happy to. And anyway, I've seen beautiful pictures that people really seem to enjoy the garden party, I must say. So it's true that it's risky to organize the garden parties in summer or winter in Beijing. <laughs> I must say that I prefer spring and autumn. And talking about seasons, how many seasons have we going through for the organization of this the two days event holder? I think it has been for sure uh, a couple of summers uh, and an autumn, a couple of springs. Uh, well, we have been doing this for quite a long time because it was really a big event. At the beginning, we even thought of organizing it through over three days. Finally, we packed everything. It was two very intense days. And what we organized, it was at the European Research and Innovation Days China. So we had our event to, to celebrate research and innovation also here in China. We even connected to the virtual event in Europe, both digitally, because our participants were also connected online and physically. So we even divided into groups to, to follow part of the part of the digital event, but we'll go. Uh, we'll talk about that uh, in a moment. Uh, and uh, on the second day, that was last Friday, we had our forum for European researchers in China. And this is an event that is not the first time we have been organizing in China. Actually, due to COVID, we had to skip uh, the event in 2020. But we had a quite successful one organized by Haldor. I wasn't with your access yet at the end of 2019. And we really hope that uh, we will keep on organizing this kind of forums uh, every year. Uh, you know, <laughs> hopefully no pandemic will uh, destroy our plans in the future. And so, yes, it was, uh, it was a very two intensive days. And uh, luckily, even from Italy, I was able to follow part of it because, Hauser, I heard that you were running all around the event with the camera to record and remember this <laughs> very interesting moment, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely, Anna. 
Uh, yes, uh, I managed to uh, to to take a little bit, uh, record a little bit of it, and we also had like uh, an ongoing uh, s s sort of uh, hybrid uh, meeting rooms that allowed uh, researchers from uh, that were stuck in Europe to also participate in parts of the meeting and so on, and uh, it was really really nice feeling uh, to be able to um, catch everybody during the event. the uh, The forum for European researchers in China, like Anna said, is it's been in, we've been preparing it since uh, January 2020. I think when uh, Anna was starting uh, as a country representative, at this point, one of the first things we discussed was to put together a group of people, stakeholders from different member states, into like a preparation uh, committee so we can start to prepare this. Obviously, we're not able to do this in 2020, but now it's finally here, this big event. And uh, standing there uh, at, at the beginning of that event was uh, really, really touching for me. and. Uh, talking to all the people that uh, were coming and, and, and discussing with them gave me this feeling that this is they're truly a service to the community of European researchers here. So to be able to really catch that moment, uh, I, I, I edited together like a couple of clips with people uh, who we were meeting with. I, during the sort of uh, the launch party of Horizon Europe that we did the first evening. So. Uh, if you don't mind, Anna, I'm going to be uh, putting on the video now for, uh, for, uh, for a couple of minutes. Hey, so I'm Paul Daly from uh, Jackson Academy of Agricultural Sciences in Nanjing. I guess my expectations for for, for the forum is to, to meet other European researchers, um, learn about their research and build collaborations, and learn how to do things better in China and work better with Chinese researchers and um, yeah, build more collaborations and um, I guess improve the synergy and the Chinese-European uh, collaborations. Lucas Senzel, I am a postdoc at the Guanghua School of Management at Peking University. I was hoping to meet uh, other European researchers and to extend my network, uh, and my hopes have been more than fulfilled here. It's been great, uh, both the, like learning about your access and Horizon uh, 21, as well as all the other researchers that I met here. I am Antonio Marciano, I'm a physicist, I work at the University, as a professor, and uh, I'm the president and representative of the Italian Association of Scholar in China. So, um, there is a lot of expectation from all of us, in the sense that I mean, there is a lot of needs from our communities, uh, our Italian national community, but in general, I think all the communities, to try to find some common solutions uh, to some problems uh, that pertain to uh, immigration, uh, mobility, being able to come back to Italy, uh, family, and I mean, it's like a visa for family, and uh, uh, these kind of uh, problems which are very practical. And then, in, in general, also, I mean, some possibility of uh, developing cross. Uh, uh, cross-national uh, networks uh, in order to create, uh, finally, some kind of European uh, community uh, beyond nations. That is uh, exactly what we are really here for at the end of the day. as an associate research professor. I'm here at the European Research and Innovation Days and we're looking forward to very fruitful discussions tomorrow. Now first we're going to break it down to career stage and now we're going to break it down to thematic groups and I think uh, if you get many people from across Europe together we can have some uh, good ideas and basically going to exchange uh, best practices. Thank you, Halder. The video was very nice. It's always nice to see familiar faces, especially when you are so far away. And uh, well, you saw just 
also some of the faces of the researchers who participate in Beijing, but we had many, many more. You need to know that we had more than 100 people, re researchers, who registered to participate in Beijing to this event. So many that at the end, I think we even had to say that we didn't have the budget to host all of them. And, uh, you know, because also the pandemic, uh, not all of them were able to travel, for example, from Guangdong province. But we, anyway, we had almost 193 researchers from 14 different EU member states that joined us in Beijing from many different parts of China. We had uh, red, um, researchers coming from 14 different cities. So really from north, the south, the east and west of China. Uh, so many of them uh, doing uh, different uh, uh, research, uh, uh, research uh, coming from different research areas joined our two days event in Beijing. And uh, to give you a couple of numbers to have a better idea, uh, we uh, had three main categories in terms of research areas. 39% uh, of the researchers that came uh, in Beijing uh, belong to social sciences. We had the majority, almost 50%, 44 to be exact, uh, in the area of natural sciences and 17% from biology, also including medical sciences. So you see, we had really a great variety of people uh, that, uh, that came to the event. And also, to, as we know that because of the pandemic and all the related restrictions uh, that, uh, that different countries and also China introduced uh, to limit the movement, uh, we, have, uh, uh, we estimate between 20 and 30 percent of European researchers normally based in China are still stuck outside of China mostly in their or, uh, country of origins uh, in Europe. We also um, gave them the opportunity to join online. So we had more than 30 uh, researchers, uh, mostly from Europe, and also uh, a few of those who didn't manage to, to join in Beijing, if, even if they were based in, in China, that, that, that participate uh, to the online activity that was um, that was organized and um, I mean I said online because they participated on hybrid so we managed to uh, make them interact online and offline but we will talk about that in a moment also what I didn't mention when uh, you know introducing what we what we have been doing last Thursday and Friday is the national meetings that also happened before the official beginning of our event. We have been working also for the organization of this event uh, for very long with the different national associations or national networks of researchers that are existing in China so that we could really evolve uh, uh, the associations where they exist uh, and try to involve uh, and uh, really uh, hear uh, all the um, all the needs uh, and involve uh, the uh, concretely the researchers uh, who are already in China in the organization and in the structuring of this event. Uh, so on Thursday, uh, on Thursday morning or early afternoon before we formally started. Uh, with the European Research and Innovation Days China, uh, five uh, networks uh, already existing hold uh, their, their meetings. There was the Spanish Association and the Italian Association who met with their members in Beijing. Then French researchers, German researchers uh, also had, uh, had, their, had their national meetings. And uh, the Holland uh, Science Network, uh, together with the Polish researchers who are not uh, uh, gathered in an association, but uh, who found themselves to be in uh, quite a number in Beijing, also met uh, to discuss, uh, you know, uh, challenges 
and uh, if uh, you know uh, they want to create other opportunity to meet uh, or maybe uh, join for the experience of other associations, they also want to uh, create a more uh, formal groups. And uh, so we had these six countries that uh, had uh, national meetings. And uh, I heard other that you also had a small event, a small meeting before the formal launch of our event, isn't it? Yes. So. Uh... Uh, yeah, I'm very, I'm very proud that we managed to get together all these national meetings before we started our event on Thursday. Uh, we have the Spanish Association and the Italian Association with, uh, with some uh, formal networkings here, but uh, the Germans and the French embassy are also very good at organizing activities for their countries. These four big countries of Europe obviously are, are, have a lot of people here and so on, and, and uh, but I'm, I'm very I'm very proud of them to to use this opportunity during the European uh, European Research Day to to uh, put their research together into their into sort of a national meetings and and uh, beyond that we also had the smaller countries like you said so like like the Polis and the Belgians and so on being able to to put together uh, meetings uh, at their embassies was also that something that I thought like worked out really well and added a lot of value to them and and and, and sort of increased the uh, the strength of the networks there between but one of the things that we did do also is that we allowed these national networks to influence and uh, have uh, some input for the workshops that were going on the day after and to be able to do that we basically put up a, like a, a big uh, a little bit of an activity where there was a big URXS poster in every national meeting and the meeting uh, participants they could sort of sword and and and, and uh, rate which issues uh, of mobility they think are the most important ones and uh, then we received that from each of the national meetings and we allowed that to uh, Give, uh, allowed that as a feedback for the workshop facilitators for the workshop that went on during the forum of European researchers, which I think is a really nice way to connect these two different activities together into one good one. And but to be make um, to be able to make sure that uh, everybody have their voice heard, uh, we in Eurex as we also organized a small pre-event meeting for researchers that uh, were not going to the national meetings where maybe they were from a country where they may be the only person from their country are attending or so on or something like that and that was also very nice so right around noon time on Thursday uh, for the three or four hours before we formally launched the European Research and Innovation Days uh, we met together in uh, the Barroso room of the European uh, delegation in Beijing, uh, several of us, and in the end it was such a nice day that we just moved out in the garden, as you can see in the picture over here. And uh, what I was thinking I could do now, Anna, is that I was thinking I could maybe just go a little bit here and go over some of the pictures that we have uh, we took during the day to explain to everybody and show everybody how these things went down. So um, after the pre-meeting uh, uh, around 1 and 3, we went and uh, opened up the registration around 3.30. And people started arriving uh, from different directions. Some of them just arrived to Beijing. Other people were coming from, uh, from their, the national meetings. Some of them had to hike a little bit because uh, you basically have a... You basically have uh, uh, people coming from the French embassy and from the Spanish embassy and so on. Others had, had to go a little bit uh, shorter distance. For example, the German embassy in Beijing is less than 10 meters away from the European one. So the German researchers, they just came over as soon as they finished and joined us for the registration. It was a lovely day. So people were like gathering together outside. And sometimes this is... Uh, the most powerful part of an on-site, in-person conference like this. It's the opportunity to meet the other researchers. It's the coffee, you know, like grabbing a coffee. We had some snacks available at 45 minutes before, people just connecting with, it, with each other and so on. And from uh, my colleagues, uh, the researchers that participated in, in, in the European Research and Innovation Days and the Forum for European Researchers, they were telling us that this was not the least, some of the big value of coming to this meeting because we uh, there are so many different meetings happening on the periphery. The Spanish Association met with the Italian Association. People were meeting with colleagues from the same discipline. There were all kinds of different meetings happening like this. And for me, this is one of the most just like valuable things to to that we can try to make happen. 
which is something that is not easy to do when it's a totally online meeting. Uh, around four o'clock, uh, we basically just moved inside of the Galileo room, which is the garden house of the European delegation, where uh, Philippe Vialat and Wojko Bratina uh, from the science department of the uh, European delegation in Beijing uh, both introduced the, uh, the new Horizon Europe program, as well as sort of like reviewing and looking back on the participation of Chinese institutions in the uh, uh, in, in Horizon 2020, which just was finished just uh, half a year ago. And uh, also, uh, me, I was also speaking, I, I introduced the, the event and what we're up to and what UREX is doing and so on. And also just I want to make sure that uh, to, to emphasize the spirit of the event that is going on and why we're doing this and what we're hoping to gain with it. This is a, a, a little picture that I got sent from uh, one of the Italian uh, researchers there. I thought it was a nice one, so I'm putting it there. <laughs> and, and when we finished up with that, it was already 5.30 in, China, in Beijing. And we had the, uh, uh, the good luck that this is exactly the same time of day that the European Research and Innovation Days that were taking place in Brussels online had their sex session on global collaboration in research and innovation. So this is something that is of great and important to us. And and we basically decided there was five different sessions online. We decided to take our audience, put them in five different parallel rooms and give them this opportunity to participate in these sessions from here in Beijing. But of course, with the room spread over north and south wing of the delegation, we had to sort of run them around campus uh, and people might not necessarily know where to go. So we had like uh, really good assistants that uh, held up big signs and told people to come. So it was really nice when I was moving to the north wing actually to see this big parade of European researchers following the sign, finding their rooms, etc. I thought it was a lovely little location. And, uh, this is from one of the meetings. This is from uh, Channel One of the European Research and Innovation Days. These people have all had all, all showed interest in, um, in 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 watching this particular part of the program, and um, and uh, while there were other people, there were also in other rooms taking a look at some of the other ones, and then they could scan a QR, uh, scan a QR code and and participate and send questions and do other things like that. Uh, and while uh, while uh, that was really a, a, a good thing to be able to connect our activities in Brussels and Beijing in this very direct and, and, and cool way. Uh, I think everybody honestly were waiting for, for the dinner reception that was took place right after around 7 o'clock in the evening. We got a lot of res uh, researchers uh, as well as science counselors from European Embassy and Chinese uh, uh, guests from the research community in her, here in China to join us in the garden of the European delegation and it did not rain on our heads so we could we could enjoy staying outside in the garden for a little bit and which was a really lovely uh, lovely thing actually and I, I could really tell that this was uh, uh, well received by the participants we, we had like a really nice dinner and drinks and at some point uh, when it was getting a little bit dark outside we got everybody to go in into the prodi room of the uh, of the european delegation where we got uh, the honor of having um, uh, with us nicolas chasiapui the ambassador of the european delegation in china introducing and launching formally Horizon Europe, the Research and Innovation Framework Program of the European Union from 2021 to 2027 here in China. So he launched it formally here in China. And it's really nice that he was available for us to do this here as the, the direct representative of European Union here in China. And uh, he uh, said some, uh, like, uh, gave us a little bit input of about the v views of the European Union towards uh, Horizon Europe and and the Chinese participation in that, etc. The day after, uh, we started early in the morning, around nine o'clock in the morning. Uh, we had workshops all over uh, the embassies, and uh, we basically organized them around different uh, working groups that were based on sort of career roles so where in their career researchers are so we had a group for PhD students another one for postdocs that I had the uh, pleasure of uh, moderating myself 
and uh, there was other ones for like as associated professors and research administrators and so on. And these groups with 16 to 20 people, each of them, discussed like eight common uh, sets of challenges that face uh, European researchers here in China with the goal of trying to find nice, uh, collect nice personal solutions from the researchers, from their own personal experience, how to overcome these challenges uh, with in mind that we could maybe use this input for a future guide for European researchers in China, which is something that we, we in Eurex are hoping to do soon. Uh, <laughs> after the workshop, uh, people were hungry, so obviously we, we offered them a little light lunch. There were sandwiches and drinks and coffee and tea available at the Galileo room. And following that, we also had a nice uh, joint session again, the last joint session of the two-day event, where uh, the European delegation basically decided to introduce their new guide for European researchers in China on the topic of IPR uh, protection. And uh, there was a lot of questions about this. This is something that researchers and scientists obviously need to think about all the time. And we had the writer of the guide as well as the IPR uh, counselor of the European delegation alongside with Philippe Vialat. Uh, the science counselor uh, discussing this topic and, and answering questions and so on. And if you have not seen this guide yet, <clears throat> you can maybe go to our website and find a copy. And uh, with that being said, uh, <laughs> uh, we, we basically uh, took everybody again with our signs and we moved them into uh, seven different thematic groups. Uh, sorry, six different thematic groups where uh, everybody again sort of reorganized into new groups that were not the same as in the morning. Maybe Anna would like to uh, to explain a little bit what we were up to and what we were doing. Yeah, of course, happy to. And um, thanks, Hazel, for showing us the pictures. Uh, you know, like so many things have been going on in these two days. Uh, and uh, I think uh, seeing some pictures also give a little bit of feeling of uh, how the event really went. Uh, and I can definitely see that you had fun and you also had the nice food and drinks. <laughs> so I'm sure that everybody was happy from every point of view, those of the work set, but also that of, you know, enjoying a little bit. And uh, yes, so the last session in the afternoon on Friday was uh, that of um, thematic groups. So we decided to uh, organize six different groups, as you said, uh, based on different research areas. First group was on physical sciences. The second was about engineering, technology, data science, these topics. The third one was a very large group because it includes uh, all the uh, researchers doing social sciences and humanities. That was really large and hard, I think, to moderate for our moderators. Then group number four was about environmental sciences. Group number five, we had all those uh, researchers focusing on IR, on politics, and on economics. And finally, group number six, there was um, uh, that one of biology and medical sciences. As I mentioned earlier, the interesting uh, element of this last activity is also that that was hybrid. So our researchers in Beijing, they split into six physical rooms in the north and the south wing of the European delegations, according to these six different thematic, uh, thematic areas. And then we had more than 30 researchers that from Europe and from also some parts of China connected online so we welcome all of them on Zoom meeting, and then they also uh, separated, divided into six different digital breakout rooms, each of which was connected to the film in Beijing. It was, it was, real, it was really days and hours of technical checks. Halder and other colleagues in Beijing was, were running from one room to the other trying to set up the screen so the quality of the video was okay and renting speakers and microphones so that the, also the audio quality was okay because you know that is key when you want to have a hybrid activity. And we basically had six 
hybrid activities at the same time. It was extremely complex and I think we were pretty successful, seriously. So in every room, the researchers in Beijing, they had a big screen, microphone and speaker, and uh, so they could hear and see the online participants and, the, uh, and also the other way around. Our online participants from Europe could see the room with the nice long tables and all the researchers participating and speaking. We had one online moderator and one offline moderator for almost all the different groups. So they were guiding the talks. Well, yeah, I think it was a great opportunity. I heard a lot of enthusiasm about this opportunity of researchers meeting with the colleagues doing and the same kind of job in the same research area in China. And um, yeah, so they, I know they shared a little bit of the challenges. They try to share the experience and best practices in working in Chinese institutions and in having access to labs, uh, of course, according to the, the specifics uh, that are characteristic of their research area. And finally, they also uh, decided, all of them six, that, that uh, it was a good opportunity and it was something to repeat. So uh, the groups established a WeChat group to stay, to stay connected and also to organize future activities. Of course, every group identified different you know, priorities and goals. Some want to have online meetings regularly, some want also to have physical meetings, some others decided to establish a website so they can upload their profiles and maybe attract more researchers in the area so that they can share, you know, publications and, you know, get a little bit of networking. That was also a very good, uh, very good element as everybody had the chance to introduce itself. And uh, finally, also uh, my colleagues, uh, Philip Boyko and Halder jumped in the rooms, into the physical rooms in Beijing, but we also saw them all since uh, we were connected on Zoom and uh, to give a little bit of introduction and um, link uh, the thematic area to what's going on with the new framework program and Horizon Europe. And uh, since uh, the work program for 2021 and 2022 had just been launched before our event, we were also very lucky uh, from this point of view. The timing was really great. Uh, we also um, introduced a couple of calls uh, uh, from uh, the clusters that, that are of interest of each thematic group. So one of EU-China global governance collaboration for group number five about politics, and another one about uh, uh, waste management for the group about environmental sciences. So we try to raise the curiosity and the interest uh, on this uh, very, uh, very abundant funding program to, to the researchers that are based in China as well. And uh, yes, so I think uh, the, the element, the thing, the, the deliverable we are more happy about is that this group school day will become permanent because researchers had an interest in that. Isn't it cool, Halder? Yeah. So, I mean, like... Uh... I can see that this is very, very useful for the researchers because already these uh, online groups that we have and these uh, forums that we created for each of them online has quite a bit of activity. People are talking to each other, they're introducing each other to each other, they're talking about what to do together, etc. So this was really well received and, and uh, I think this is something we can do a lot of things with in the future because uh, when you put together researchers, something magical happens. If you put together researchers in the same field that are, are focusing on the same type of, of, of knowledge creation, that's when the real, you know, like uh, dynamic things can like really start to fly. So we would be happy to in the future do events with them. We could do other hybrid events or totally online events. We can connect them with Chinese researchers or researchers in Europe as we want. So these thematic groups are really, really useful uh, uh, output of this event. Uh, it's not the only output though, like I said earlier about the workshops, we also collected uh, a lot of best practices from, from researchers with that in mind that this could start the work 
of creating a guide for European researchers in China. And this is something that we are, are reacting to uh, a request from the community because in the last forum in 2019 and also from the national networks of researchers, we've gotten in this input that this would be something that would be very well received and useful, especially for new researchers that are coming and might need to uh, learn quickly some things that um, that could take some time to otherwise uh, understand uh, about uh, working here in China as a researcher. Uh, and this is not an easy thing to do. I mean, like, there's no one expert that can answer all these questions. It's not really something you can just Google. You need to first find out all the different things that, that uh, people have learned throughout. Some people might know one thing and other people have learned something else. So what our goal was, was to start the work to kind of get all of that knowledge together. And we hope that in the future we can take that and put it into a, into a, a sort of a collaborative uh, effort with the national networks with these thematic groups we created and so on and create this really nice guide for the community to give back to them because they have been so nice to 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 uh, support us through these events and so on so this is our uh, way to do that so this uh, this guide uh, we are expecting in 2022 is very exciting the thematic groups are also really really exciting if you are a researcher that is watching us, us to, right now and you were not able to come to the forum you're still more than welcome to join these thematic groups they are going to be ongoing even now when the forum is over if you don't know how to go about it you can connect me contact me or anna and we can figure out how to get you into these groups and make sure that you're going to be involved in whatever capacity that you like. So these are really exciting things. These are only things that can happen because of a really well-organized, well-planned event like the European Research and Innovation Days in China that we organized with the European delegation. And uh, yeah, that's it. I think uh, like so often, we always end up being like a 40 minutes. And I think uh, I think this should be probably it for for today's podcast. What do you think? Yeah, I think uh, we shared a lot of uh, insights already. So we always have a lot of things to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we run a little bit longer. So let's uh, close it here for today. And uh, thanks everybody who was watching, if anyone was. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. And, uh, and uh, see you guys next month, I guess. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, <laughs> everybody.